Welcome to our tutorial about the flange tool. I've already created a primary plate. Now let's activate the flange tool. First, we need to choose whether we'll work with edges, the top icon, or a loop, the bottom icon. With the loop option, I can select the top or the bottom loop. Let's work with edges for this example. I'm also able to select top or bottom edges, and of course this influences whether the flange goes in a positive or negative direction. Under height extents, we can select distance or two. If you select two, then we're able to specify, for example, a plane. For this example, let's use the distance option, and we'll make it a 10 millimeter flange. To flip the direction, click here. Flange angle. If it's less than 90 degrees, the flange will look outward. If the angle is greater than 90 degrees, the flange will look inward. The next field is bend radius. Bend radius, as you may remember from our previous tutorials, is defined in the sheet metal style dialog window. When you mouse over this field, you'll see the radius value. This field also accepts numeric input and formulas. We're going to leave it as is with bend radius selected. Now let's look at bend position. Let's reposition my part a little bit so I can better see the bend. The first option is inside of bend face extents. This option is easier to explain with a 90 degree flange angle. Let's try that out. There we go. If you extend a line along this edge, the flange will be inside this line. Let's return to a 135 degree angle. If you extend the line along this edge, it's going to cross the corner. Right here. The next option is bend from adjacent face. This option positions the bend such that it starts at the edge of the selected face. Let's try the third option, outside of base face extends. Basically, if you extend a line along this edge, it'll cross at this corner down here with this edge. The last option is bend tangent to side face. It works like this. If we extend this edge, the bend will be tangent to this line. Now let's look at the height datum options. Let's change the distance value to 5 millimeters. The first option is bend from the intersection of the two outer faces. Let's change the bend position. With this option selected, the 5 millimeter measures from this corner to this corner. The next option is bend from the intersection of the two inner faces. If we extend this edge out to this edge, this 5 millimeter distance measures from this intersection to this top edge. The next option is parallel to the flange termination detail face. It works like this. If we create a line tangent to this edge and parallel to this edge, the distance between these two lines will be 5 millimeters. The last option, aligned or orthogonal. If this option is selected, the 5 millimeter distance will be measured along the flange or, in our case, along the axis. For example, if this option, bend from the intersection of the two inner faces, is selected, the 5 millimeters will measure from the top face along the Z axis. If this option is selected, the 5 millimeters will measure from the bottom face along the Z axis. All right, let's click the double arrows and expand this dialog window. By default, the width of the flange is along the selected edge. We have edge pre-selected. Our other options are width, offset, and from to. Let's select width. If width is selected, we're able to input the value of the flange, let's say 20 millimeters. Let me use the offset option, and then I'm going to select this corner. And let's click here to flip the direction. Now the width of the flange is 20 millimeters offset 5 millimeters from this edge. 
Let's try the offset option. The first corner is already pre-selected in our graphic space. I'm going to select the second corner. And now let's enter an offset value of 10 millimeters. The last option is from to. Basically here we can select other geometry, for example, a plane or a face. For this example, let's use the edge option. And flange angle, let's enter 90 degrees. And I'm going to select two more edges. You'll notice that the width extent section is now grayed out. And we've got an extra glyph on our workspace right here. If I click this glyph, I get a Bend Edit dialog window. From this window, I can select the Width Extent option for each edge individually. Let me select a centered flange of width 20 millimeters. Let's uncheck this box and click OK. Now let's click on the corner glyph. We get a Corner Edit dialog window, and from this window we can edit each corner individually. Let's uncheck this and click OK. And let's click OK to create our flange. Let's activate the flange tool again. I'm going to select this edge and this edge. You notice that because I selected both edges at the same time, Inventor will miter the edges automatically. This mitering is displayed here in the preview. If I don't want Inventor to auto miter, I go to the corner tab and uncheck Apply Auto Mitering. Let's recheck Apply Auto Mitering and click OK. Let's create one more flange. I'll select this edge and the angle. Let's enter a value of zero. Let's expand the dialog window. Check Old Method under Design. And as you see in our preview, we've created a juggle as a result. This concludes our tutorial about the flange tool.